First podium of the weekend. It's a biggie. It's a fun one. These are some of my favorites. I think eight or nine drivers brought special helmets to the Grand Prix this weekend. I should have counted before we started. <laughs> Everyone will celebrate Silverstone. Yeah. And most, so many of them, even if they're not a British driver, like, did their junior career, so they really grew up there. So, we're gonna do best specialty helmets of the weekend. I do have two honorable mentions. We love our honorable mentions. They're always very, I mean, we, they're fitting. It's hard to make decisions. Three is not enough right. options. No. So I cheated, and I'm assuming based on how you're saying that, that you followed the rules and you only brought a P1 through P3? I did. I, I did have a P1 okay. through P3, but I'm happy to hear that you have honorable mentions. Okay. Well, honorable mention one, Esty Bestie. While it wasn't my favorite design, I liked the idea that if you're going to bring a tribute helmet to the fact that the race team operates out of England, the fact that he put all the names of people who worked in the factory on the helmet, I just thought it was wholesome and worth an honorable mention. Absolutely adorable. I love that one. And then honorable mention two is Lewis Hamilton. I don't think it actually qualifies as a special helmet, which is why it's not on my podium. He, j But I did like that he put the Mission 44 logo on the top of his helmet, which is where you get most of the camera angles. And for a non-profit organization that works primarily out of the UK, it just felt like important to call attention to it. And therefore I am now gonna call further attention to it by putting it as an honorable mention on the podium. <laughs> All right, let's actually get into this. <laughs> okay, what well is your P3? <laughs> I will kick off by P3 with, and um, it kind of works out because it was an honorable mention, SD Bestie. Ah, sorry. No, that's okay. I also really loved it and I appreciate, you know, the acknowledgement of team members working in any sense and like that being a call it to home. I also love that it had the coordinates of both of their factories on it. Like, I think that's really sick. Yeah, so a cool idea and wow, the someone sat with a good amount of time and had the placement to make sure all of those names fit well. So shout out to them. <laughs> Did it have every name or like, did they send out a Google form? It was like, if you want your name on the helmet, so it's like first come first serve and you had to like write in the name. I like how they sell like squares on the checkered flag. It's like, have yes. your name on the flag. Like if on you don't SD submit Besties. it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, all right, my P3 was Fernando Alonso. I don't normally put Alonso on many podiums, but his helmet this week, with the like throwback number on it was really cool. And it's also, it's actually the same kind of style as the Williams livery for Singapore, the special golf livery I voted for. I just, I love that like old timey circle number. It, it's always gonna get me. I knew you were gonna have this on yours and it was you were gonna be like, I don't wanna put Fernando on here, but yeah. it is really cool and we love throwbacks and you know callbacks to old things and Aston Martin has such history. So that was definitely a really, really cool design. Okay, so we're on to P2. I had a rule for myself on this podium that I was only allowed to select one shiny chrome designed helmet. I set unnecessary rules for myself. So P2, I have Pierre Gasly. I was a big fan of his obnoxious shiny chrome like British UK flag and it, Alpine had just such a like hardcore unnecessarily hardcore like intro video of it of the helmet just going around the UK and just all of these different places and things it shot really cool it looked cool in the lighting and just was definitely my pick um, and I mean we have the other obvious chrome pick but I was going with the theme of the British GP here and I picked Pierre for my P2. I love when we do these podiums and we both do them because this is where like our different tastes really show because I thought that was the ugliest helmet. And I, I, thought the, I thought the only helmet that was uglier this weekend was Valtteri's and, and it'd be really funny if in a second you tell me that's your P1. Oh, Nicole has left the frame. For those of you watching on YouTube, there is now just a chair and Taylor Swift down. I'm okay, literally not back. even gonna wait. I'm not even gonna wait for you to tell me anything else. My P1, Valtteri Bottas. I loved how corny and unbelievably 2012 keep calm and carry on his helmet was. <laughs> like, 
like we have such an order that we do these podiums and I'm throwing it out the window because at 100% in my nose. I can't breathe. Oh my gosh. I thought, like, I think there's a way you can do chuggy in, like, that's fun, and I did not think oh, that. Oh my god. You gotta do chuggy. You gotta do chuggy as not. No, he did. He did such an incredible level of chuggy, and 2012 Nicole would have absolutely like had that phone uh, had like that pattern as like her phone background. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> Well, we did not write this. Anyway, so clearly we have different P2s and P1s. <laughs> I need a minute. Oh my gosh, as I was saying it, I watched your face come to a realization. It was, that was, okay. Well, my P2 was Joe's. Mm-hmm. He did a throwback to his carding helmet. And I really liked the colors of it, and I liked that he did a, a thing that was, like, British GP themed without having to put the Union Jack on it. <laughs> like, you know how we always say that, like, F1, basically what it does is it goes around and appropriates, like, every stereotype of an area? So I just appreciate when someone avoids doing that. <laughs> Keep calm, carry on. <laughs> we did not plan this. I cannot no. believe this. This is. I'm so glad this is being recorded in live. <laughs> My P1 is Lando Norse. So it was my Chrome option of choice, and I I loved the marketing of it. But also, if you're gonna go Chrome, like go Chrome. And he did it. He, he did literally it. he did Chrome. It is. It is the chromiest of chrome helmets that have ever chromed. It really, really was what it was. Did you see the photo after the race of all the bugs that got picked up by the helmet that you can... Because no! <laughs> ew! Like, which I'm sure always happens and happened to every driver, but you basically just see a bunch of dead gnats all over the helmet because it's chrome and you can see it. Gross. <laughs> so gross, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so. but... Nothing else could be P1 for me because the marketing of it mixed with like just how sick it looks. And yes, my podium somehow included Alonzo and Lando. Like we need to mark this moment for prosperity. Yeah, I don't, I, this is an imposter. I do not know who this is, except for the fact that our podiums were so unbelievably different confirms that this definitely is you. So there we go. <laughs> we need to confirm that you're getting multiple viewpoints on this podcast. We sometimes think the same and unbelievably different. Podium of data points that we can't get into as much detail as the Ferrari McLaren stuff, but I need to talk about because I saw it in the data, which I could also translate to data I would have sent to Unicol in a voice note, but instead I'm saying on the pod. Incredible. P3, Perez versus Max. So we'll start with qualifying. I pulled up the telemetry. And first, I just thought the map was funny, which for those of you only listening, uh, the blue is Perez, and he has maybe, I'm being generous, a tenth of the lap in blue. And it's just like a couple of various corners on the circuit, but it's just a lot of white, which is Max Verstappen. Uh, but the actual interesting thing is on the telemetry, when you look at the throttle trace and the brake trace, you'll notice that his braking, his meaning Perez, is relatively similar to Max's. Like there's no stark differences here like we were seeing with Leclerc and Sainz. But what we're actually seeing is the throttle trace. So Max was spending more of the lap at full throttle than Perez was. So you can see, um, particularly about halfway through the lap here, like there were moments in the high speed corners where Max lifted significantly less compared to Paris. And I really think that's a lot of where his lap time was made up, was the fact that like Paris just doesn't feel as confident with the car. So it seems like he feels confident enough in braking, but not in not braking. Got it. <laughs> um, but quick lap time numbers, 
Overall average lap in the first stint when they were both on mediums, Perez was nearly nine tenths a lap, almost a full second slower than Verstappen. Uh, normal caveats here. Of course, Perez was in traffic and behind, but he also had DRS. So, I don't know, you know, and Max really didn't. Yeah. So that with that, there you go. That's P3. Let's go on to P2 of random data points we can't get into with a lot of detail. Lewis's pace on the mediums versus Russell on the softs. So uh, Lewis did the exact same average lap time on the mediums as Russell did on the softs. And yes, this is my Lewis Hamilton propaganda. And uh, that's it. That's really all I have to say there. <laughs> and P1, just everything the Williams did this weekend. <laughs> I think notably there's sector one here. The fact that Albon on the medium in, in that first stint was the fourth fastest driver in sector one. He was only four hundredths away from Max's average time in sector one. The only other drivers that were faster in sector one than Alex Albon, well, Max, I'm not counting Max, was because everything's the gap to Max, uh, is Lewis and Carlos. So he did, he was faster than both Aston Martins, the other Ferrari, the Alpine, both McLarens and Sergio Perez. Struggled more in sector two, which is why his total lap time didn't end up high in this group. But then he was middle of the pack for sector three. And he was only losing three tenths to max, which put him on par with the Ferraris and faster than the Astons. So Williams pace, not, those Friday free practice numbers, while obviously they're inflated by like all the, the normal confounding practice events, like I don't think they were a fluke. Like Williams data here doesn't say like free practice fluke. This was, they were in the points on merit this weekend. Unbelievable. I never thought it was going to happen. I mean, yeah, the, the free practice data, no matter how much of a fluke it was, was even still just... Woo! They were fast. Wild time as a just, just as Williams. Wow, 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 wow. So this was not the Silverstone that Mercedes, I will say, advertised and <laughs> that's for Toto advertised competing for a win. This was not that. I, and I really do believe that the man thought that's what was going to happen. And it just wasn't. Okay, but that's not why I'm here. This is a podium of moments as a Mercedes fan that didn't make me want to cry and scream from Silverstone. <laughs> so, you know what? Because the glass can be half full, even times when it just feels half empty. And this could have been a podium of every single moment that Lewis Hamilton basically, like, breathed air at Silverstone. And I chose to not have it be that type of podium. So these are some wholesome so, moments, some great moments, some wonderful Mercedes moments. So it wasn't Lewis's podium or Lewis's incredible race pace or Lewis not bashing the car just with a sledgehammer because he was so frustrated. None of those things. None of those things podium. are on this okay. podium, but they all okay. definitely could have all qualified for P1. So instead okay. I will start with P3. George having a wholesome family moment on stage. So at the fan stage area, you know, he brings out his niece and nephew and they're like decked out in GR 63 merch. And I'm just like, this is so cool and cute. And imagine like your uncle's an F1 driver and you get to be brought out on stage at Silverstone of all places, like a hardcore, like definite core memory being like developed at that time. I was like, I want to do this. <laughs> That did not make me want to cry or scream. Right, I think right. that's a good P3. It, like it was like a wholesome cry. It was like yeah. a, oh, like that kind of cry. Not like a, oh my God, why did I make these decisions in life? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> P2. Um, P2. George and Toto's uniquely patterned shirts. This <laughs> video I watched numerous times in a row. It is George sporting an incredible Darth Toto, fully patterned, repeated shirt, and Toto then in a Susie Wolf patterned, 
repeated shirt. And I think I need both of those shirts. I don't know which one I want more, but I think I need both of them. I just loved the video for watching Toto's immediate distaste for the fact that he knew, damn, I'm going to have to put on that shirt. And it, it didn't matter whose face was on the shirt. It just doesn't match Toto's whole whole thing. And He's he... in the middle of eating breakfast, and George walks in wearing that shirt, and Toto knew there's oh. going to be one that I'm going to have to wear with somebody's face. But you know what? He probably thought it was George's face, and then maybe when he saw that it was Susie's, he was like, okay, I guess, like, <laughs> maybe it's less. But he just knew that no matter what, this is exactly what was going to go, he gonna go down. He still leaned into the bit. Leaned into the bit and respect Darth Toto for that bit. And P1, superstar of the entire re- weekend, Roscoe Hamilton. This dog is media trained. He was anywhere, everywhere, all the time. I can't believe the amount of attention. You would think he's an additional driver on this grid. I was losing my mind when he showed up with Lewis on the first day. And then every single day after that, Roscoe was delivering on the content. I went into this weekend fully expecting way too much Brad Pitt content. And I think Roscoe Hamilton upstaged Brad Pitt. I saw maybe two or three like photos that everyone put out of Brad Pitt in the filming of the movie. At least a dozen different unique pieces of content that other people were like, I want to do content with that dog. And don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure Roscoe has more Instagram followers than at least 80% of the grid. And I will put up on the screen what the actual ranking he is um, on the YouTube video because I don't remember right now. But but Roscoe Hamilton is the man. I definitely saw more interviews from Roscoe this weekend than some drivers. Like, there's definitely some drivers that I did not personally watch interviews for. And I watched multiple interviews of a dog and a tiny microphone. So, you know, he was the superstar. Shout out to Roscoe. Marketing moments of the weekend. If this is your first Gridwalk episode, or you haven't heard us say this yet, we both work in marketing. We're both big marketing business nerds. So I thought there was enough cool marketing moments of the weekend to make a podium match. Honorable mention, F1's first attempt at the digital on-track advertisements that you add in post onto the surface. I think this is cool tech. This is tech they use in a ton of other sports. Like notably, I see it all the time in basketball where they'll just put different sponsors on the court. Feels like something F1 was lacking. Now I will say that their first attempt wasn't stellar. It it didn't line up quite right, but I'm glad to see them innovating. P3, the Williams pop-up store. I will never skirt around a moment to talk about what a great thing the Williams pop-ups are. They are the only team that's doing this right now. Not only could you go there at certain times to meet different personalities, including their drivers, their team principal, their development drivers, but also just the experience at the pop-ups are so cool. We went to the one in Austin last year. You can drive simulator. You can do the the button pressy reaction time thing. Their merch is sick. It's just such good marketing and fan activation. P2. Apex GP selling sponsorships for their fake movie car. Now, of course, for movies, you sell sponsorships, and that's why there's product placements in movies. But I thought it was really cool marketing that they sold these sponsorship placements, put them on the car, and then you get the extra boost of everyone who's engaging with F1 now and everyone at the track at the circuit who got to see the car go around interact with your sponsors. So they probably got to charge more beyond just it being in the movie because it was there on track. And we all now know that all of these brands are sponsoring this movie. Unbelievable. It's incredible to see sponsorship like that and that like on the livery. Like, Those are real companies. P1, the Ferris wheel that looks like the Chrome logo. <laughs> incredible job like i just love when the chrome logo for a sponsorship thing goes on anything circular but what particularly made this special is that that ferris wheel was behind so many shots of the weekend 
And like it could have just been a Ferris wheel. And instead, it was just always the Chrome logo. I think that Ferris wheel was better marketing well spent than the Chrome livery on the car. Because the car always has Google Chrome marketing. There's not always a Ferris wheel in the background of like every shot with the giant Chrome logo on it. 100%. Ferris wheel with the Chrome logo at every race, now and forever. Thank you for listening to this highlight from episode 25 of Gridwalk. Don't forget to like and subscribe for a bunch more F1 videos. Also, you made it this far in this video. Why not watch the rest of the podcast? You can click here for the full thing. Ready? Click, 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 click.